Hello there, um, good afternoon on a, um, a relatively nice February afternoon um, and I have got the knitting superstars that are, and I'm going to say it right this time because I've been pronouncing it wrong all day, Anna and Carlos. Ooh, yes. Was that better than earlier? <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> um, we've been lucky enough at Black Sheep Walls today to have them with us for the whole day. We've done a workshop this morning, they've conquered my fear of Fair Isle and we've just had a great lecture. Um, and one of the things that came up in the lecture that really, really, really made me laugh it was Kim Kardashian. Oh yeah, the bum doll. Yeah. <laughs> the it doll with the bum, sorry. We had to make that one. Yeah. I can remember the picture really vividly when it appeared. Mm. So she got so much attention on mm. the internet and actually we didn't get it. No. It's like, what's the problem? <laughs> She's just showing a little bit of her ass. Yeah. And then we were thinking, there's like just let's we could make that. We were bored. And because she said, like, break the internet, and then we were thinking, let's nip the internet. So. And we needed her, and it got loads of, of hits on, on, on social media, and then Huffington Post, and Harper Bazaar in Australia. Everybody was just, you know, wanting a comment from us. That and that just amazing. And, and they asked us, why did you knit her? And we just said, well, why not? I mean, we had to Google her because we didn't know who she were. You didn't know who no, she was. No. You can tell you're not in the UK then, because it's all she seems, she seems to be talked about a lot oh, over yeah. here. Yeah. Well, we Unfortunately, don't have, we don't have that channel where no. we come from. So. And is that a, is that a common occurrence in your household then that you just see something? Oh, we can get that. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we think we should knit things, but then we have so much to do. So there's a lot of things we haven't knitted yet, but <laughs> we have a lot of ideas. Yeah. What's been the thing that you've knitted that probably you're most proud of? Is it possible to isolate one? Yes. Well, I always say the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Four balls, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm proud of my balls. <laughs> I mean, no, you're so, so proud of your balls. Yeah. Proud of the ball. <laughs> no, but they, they're all very beautiful in, you know, in each in their own mm. special way. They all have traditional patterns that come from our heritage. And they're really, f you know, they're very fun and addictive to knit. And I think that um, and it's beautiful. And yeah, Christmas. they look yeah. gorgeous when you put them on the tree. Well, so. I I been looking enough to see a picture of their Christmas tree today, and all with all their balls, um, and it really was quite beautiful. It was. It was fantastic. <laughs> it's very Christmassy. A very very, very Christmassy. Christmassy. Yeah. Um, and so, where does your inspiration come from? Is there a particular place, a particular I think it's, time that you hark back to? Or? No, it's always about. Uh, I mean, we take the inspiration from our life, mm -hmm. like the way we live it, and. Traveling a lot and getting impulses and then going home and sitting down and thinking of things we want to do and then getting inspired by, by different aspects of our life, childhood, lo lo memories, childhood. Uh, colors, people we meet, people we meet yeah. are very inspiring and, and yeah, I mean, it we, also, we also look a lot at the news, we see what's going on in the world because what, what you do like in the knitting world and like when you're in the fashion world, it's always inspired of mm. what yeah. Going, what's going yeah. on in the world? So maybe we should knit to Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, we could do knit with the Donald. I was just going to say I can see that hair. With the Donald, Donald, Donald hair, sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, you could do him and Hillary Clinton next to each other. That would be quite interesting. Thought this afternoon could get a bit silly. Yeah, yeah. I think we're doing it. <laughs> And we've we've heard a lot about your about your house and everything when we were listening to the lecture earlier. And um, can you just tell us a little bit about the garden because it was sensational. Yeah, we were. I think we were very proud of the garden mm. because we worked a lot with the garden and it works like a, we call it sanctuary. 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 Yeah. It's a sanctuary, but it's also a place that we can. I mean, like. If you think about an artist like Monet, he, he would paint his garden every day and that was his source of inspiration. I think that uh, we look at the garden and we go into it and we just look at the colours and then, you know, that really brings a lot of help to us yeah. when we're working on our colours. So it's, it's, it really gives us something back. I mean, it's a beautiful garden, but we do get a lot out of it. And is it something you've ever done formally or is it just an instinctive, you move to this house, it needed something around it, so it's going to be better. Yeah, it all, it all happened. Yeah. We like to make it nice around them. Yeah. And the garden just happened. We didn't know it was going to take that much effort. I mean, we've started a business and the garden at the same time, <laughs> which is insane. Yeah. And carrying all the rocks and doing everything by hand. 
So uh, yeah. I then don't you know. see it grows yeah. and you get more inspired. And in Norway, the wind, the summer is so the, 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 it don't have the night. Yes, the yes, yeah. very a lot of light. So, so yeah, that's all quite light. So you're outdoors almost the whole summer, and then the house, no, the garden is like an extension of the house. So you spend more time. Right. Yes. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. So you would be like to have it nice around. I think that's very typical yeah. of Scandinavian. Mm. Yeah. And you're both, from the time I've spent with you, you seem to be very instinctive crafters. It's something that you just sort of pick up and do. Yeah. Mm. Um, obviously, there's a, without your design and so on, there's a huge amount of thought process that goes into that. But you both seem quite comfortable just to pick the needles up and think, I'll give this a go and I'll give that a go. Yeah. Is it something you learn very young? Is, it, is, craft, is craft something that's traditionally passed down in Norway? In my family, it yeah. Was. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's passed down, and uh, you know, even if everybody doesn't knit in Norway, I think that uh, everybody can, in one way or another, knit. Yeah. At one point, they learned it at school. They don't have that fear of things like, like the double pointed needles. A lot of people in the UK do have, do have a small fear, uh, like you. Yeah. But, but in Norway, in Norway um, a lot of new beginners have just picked up our books, like our Christmas yes. book, and just learned how to knit like that. And, and they just, you know, it, it, is, it is a knitting country with very rich, deep yeah. traditions. That's good. So, you published your first book in 2009? 10. 10, 2010. 10, 10, 10. What were you doing before that? We were in the fashion industry. We mm -hmm. had a knitwear line for the very high-end market. Yeah. Our, our knitwear was sold in stores like Nichol, uh, Harvey Nichols and wow. Liberties okay. and yeah. ASOS as well online. And it was, it was all made in these beautiful alpaca and merino wool uh, fibers by artisans in Peru. And it was, a great, it was a great time. We did a lot of exciting collaborations mm -hmm. with brands like Comme des Garçons. We worked with Urban That's Outfitters awesome. on a whole yes. capsule collection also at one point. It was really fun, but after a while we, we just got, got bored with it. Yeah. 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 I wanted yeah. to do something else. We wanted to get into more the craft aspect of it because we love the process we love showing people the inspiration the ideas behind yeah. our, our products and the product itself is not that exciting once you've done it you've done it and then you you know you have to start yeah. a new one and the, and the times were changing the world was changing also yes. so it's like you couldn't have a winter collection in winter maybe because it wasn't cold so everything was like out of fashion in the fashion industry yes. and we saw that the arts and crafts Scene was actually more fashionable in a way. Yeah, so, that's true. Actually, it did yeah. with the recession. At one point, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. So and it's just, still... it's just great to inspire people mm. and tell stories, tell uh, tell people about our work, instead of just you know putting a lot of yeah. unnecessary products on the market yeah. that people might not need. You're working more with emotions and feelings than you are with the product. It, something we spoke about yeah. yesterday yeah. as well was that um, there's a lot, there's a, a big movement in the UK at the moment about knitting therapy. Mm. Um, and I know it's something that you say take, take a lot of pleasure that people in times of stress, etc. are turning to your books. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it also seems like it's a status symbol almost in some, some among some people, yes, you have the people who know how to knit and the people who don't. <laughs> and if you're the one who know how to knit, you have like a higher status yeah. in a way, because you can do your stuff. And the good thing is also you can pick your own colors. Yes, that's yeah. also good. And that's the problem when you produce clothes because you have to pick a color, and maybe the client doesn't want to have exactly the color you picked, and then you can produce two sweaters in. In red, if the one you have is blue, for example. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, when you do patterns, yes. Yeah. And I suppose what you do now, a lot of people is very accessible, whereas obviously the high end fashion wasn't, so you can hmm. you can spread the word. Um, yeah, 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 spread the joy. Spread, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people come together and do the projects, and we've We've learned a lot. I mean, we when we started it out in this business, we didn't really think about all the things you can do, like knit alongs. Yeah. And we know we've got uh, Instagram people that we follow that do, for example, the Christmas ball knit along together with their friends. And then one one is in Portland, the other one is in Australia, and then there's one in Japan. They've never met, but they do this online together. It's so and yeah. it's, so, it's 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 a nice thing to have a group of people that you can connect with. Yeah. yeah. I love the fact that. You're also very keen on seeing to be putting back in and giving people inspiration, but also not necessarily charging people for that inspiration. 
Um, so your your fifty two week project. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like two, or fifty two nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yes. no, no, free patterns. So <laughs> free patterns and tutorials. and tutorials that we said we do. And if my calculation is correct, we still have forty to go. So do you know what those forty patterns are going to be? Well, we know we filmed twenty of them last oh, okay. summer, so we've right. got twenty left, but it's still. A lot of work. <laughs> and if we knew what we were getting into, we wouldn't have done it. Uh, probably we would, because we're we love bigger, we're difficult bigger projects. <laughs> but this one is really a commitment, and we've already. You know, the worst thing is when you actually go online and say it. And we wrote it already on the first one. I mean, how stupid can you be? <laughs> we're doing fifty-two patterns now. We have to do fifty-two yes. <laughs> tutorials. Yeah, there's no getting away there's from no that getting away at from all. It but it's no. fun. I mean, we are enjoying it. It's just a little bit more time consuming than we thought. And we already have a whole bunch of other things to do. Well, you travel the world a lot mm -hmm. as well, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just, it's really I mean, hard to work when you travel. So. Well, particularly if you're away from home, and that's where you get most of your yeah. inspiration from mm -hmm. as well. You can't bring your stash. <laughs> no, you can't. So that's a big problem. And I suppose you must get recognised an awful lot now as well. Well, they have yeah. been yeah. time. Yeah. Where's been the bizarrest place that someone's recognised you? Oh, oh, that was in Edinburgh actually. It was so weird because we don't usually, I mean, we, we don't usually get that recognized, but when we went to Edinburgh in 2014, we'd, we'd, we'd literally gotten off the plane and, and taken a taxi to the hotel. Sorry, we'll carry on anyway. That yeah. was just yeah, the director's phone, but there you go. <laughs> so okay, go so on, we, yeah. we, literally, we literally got off the plane and got into the hotel and the room wasn't ready for us so we had to walk in, in town mm -hmm. and within five minutes there was a we were stopped on the street by a, a Scottish lady and then after that we went, we continued walking and we got stopped by a Dutch woman with her, all her family and then again we got stopped by another <laughs> English uh, person and that was all within I don't know 15 minutes and, and, and that, that's very unusual that really doesn't happen. You're obviously big celebrities in Scotland I need to look at why you're so big in Scotland and what you've been doing up there. <laughs> but they need you doing Easter they did the Inca trail yes oh yeah that's true and you know there's Norwegians all over the world you think you're the only one but you never <laughs> because Norwegians travel so in Machu Picchu there was a group of Norwegians and they knew who we were so suddenly we were talking about knitted Christmas balls and dolls yeah. and things. <laughs> and, in, and in Peru we both had we were wearing hats because of the sun. So I was so naive, I thought that you know as long as we just pull the hats down, nobody's gonna recognize us. But here we are two guys with our hats down and then we still have our signature glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knew who we were. But if we were you alone, are quite recognizable, aren't you? Well, that's mostly when we are both of us together. If if we are alone, yeah, we can be more anonymous yeah. if it's just alone. one of us. So if you want a real break, you need to get away from each other, though. Yeah. yeah. Really <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there'll come a point when you're not allowed to fly together because you're just too famous. Oh my yeah. God. But it's all about like, the glasses. Yeah, I don't think we're all allowed to do that, are they? But it's all about the glasses because we're so normal. Mm -hmm. We're not like this. You're not as reputable as flamboyant as a lot of other no. designers who you see. We don't have time for that. <laughs> we're always knitting. We're always knitting, so I'm working. We're yeah. very <laughs> But I just, I can't thank you enough for the last couple of days. It's been fantastic. Thanks, it's been really fun. Really good. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. No, no, thank no, you no. very, very much. We've been honoured to have you here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you.